Well, go on, everybody. Lennox here from Simple One Two Three Trader. Good morning, and welcome to the Wednesday session. The New York stock market open. We should hear a sounding bell, starting bell in a moment. Let's uh, see if that. Uh, there we there go. There we go. There's we the bell. Off. The battle is on as it were. All right. Um, with me, as usual, is Mr. George Pitcher, who's in uh, New Jersey. Good morning from New Jersey. And uh, whoever is uh, attending this morning, we appreciate you hanging with us. And uh, we'll see how what the first uh, few minutes uh, Give us here. So right now I am well, I'm looking at. Me to show uh, everyone uh, the difference between the futures and and the uh, uh, minis that we tend to look at during the day. Okay, I, I um, George, at this at this moment in time, I I just want to um, see if there's anything happening. In, that I can uh, move into immediately in the market. So okay. Um, that's, that's a little bit more important at this moment in time. So let me just okay, do that. It seems. Yeah. So I'm looking at the individual. Spies, the spies have. On, on the one minute, I'm looking at the, um, the diamonds, the Dow Jones Industrial, the. Um, the Q's at the top right, and the spiders at spy at the bottom left, and this one is not IWM, which is the one I want. There it is. There's IWM. Okay, and I'm going to go to one minute. All right, so that's what it looks like. So I've got two. Okay, so IWM. Go ahead. Bear with me one sec. Minute. As of this morning, uh, looking at the futures, the NASDAQ is the weakest of everything. Okay, now um, I have, I'm still holding my uh, 203 calls from the other day, from Monday. So I, those are doing quite well. So we bought the 203 calls on Monday for this move, and um, you know, we're doing quite nicely at this very moment in time. So, there that's what it looks like. Uh, things are really moving um, quite briskly on the IWM, which is kind of, kind of nice. So, yeah, I think the there's not even an opportunity to yeah. get into this at this moment because it's moving so quickly. Very interesting. Yeah, the IWM has actually been uh, the most active uh, one moving higher. Let me just go to the hourly. So um, let me just get rid of all this stuff. So things are, have moved quite quickly. So putting, I'm just going to put the fibs on for the for to show where uh, target would be located. Target. I would look for target in the. Um, 1.618 area first so i take some off at that point which is at uh, 207.24 which would be quite the profit from 203 that's four points so that's about 400 dollars per contract so that's a, that's quite quite the move i also bought the spies and let me just see how the spies look And that's quite a nice jump as well. And I had the 452s. And uh, that's, a, again, from 452 to 455 is 300 points. So it's about $300 per contract right now. We can double check on the actual price in the market. Um, so SPIES, 452 calls right now. Mm 
Yeah, they're at 419 bid for 25 ask, so that's great. Go back to the IWM. So there, yeah, things have moved so quickly here that it's just amazing. Um, let me go back to the one minute. Okay. So that might be a signal to uh, take some profit off the table right there, right now. Yeah, I would say the uh, I've got three down bars so far, and the ticks. Let me just do that. Okay, we're turning back up right now. We're right at the 20 moving average, just above it. Right now, the spies are rather flat since the open. as is the accuse. Okay, um, right now the IWM seems to be flattening out at this point. You took some off the table. Okay. And so I'll look for some other opportunities as the market opens. So, um from monday holding on to those um those calls for expiration today uh, paid dividends in this case so that was um that was the plan and it's all based off um our original pattern that that we saw so we had a one two three four five move and um that took us up to this level here we just move these over and make them correct so that move from here is we had another one two three here and a nice move so that we ex we're expecting another another move from here and that's what's that's what's given us that nice um these nice that's a terrible looking yeah okay so that's that was the setup that, well, that we were looking for and uh, I hope it's not so we can actually you can use the, the second one two three for targets as well so i can go like this remember okay this is on the 15 minute chart so this is a, this is a larger look at it higher time frame look at it so you can use that one as a as as your basis for your target new if i did that i would look at the look at the 1.618 and the two the two percent area as for targets and it's just reached that so that's just perfect so that would be the perfect play at that point okay okay we're getting a lot of consolidation now on all of these Are, are you showing your remote desktop connection there? No. That's accidentally. All right, so I, I was looking for an, an opportunity here to, to jump into something, but uh, at this point you can see it made, it opened up with that, that big jump so there's not really much room for a play here. You could go from from uh, that bar. Okay, so this would be a this is would be a, an entry if we were looking for an entry. You would um, enter on that bar because what that is actually doing 
is giving us a, um, a one, two, three right here. But we can't see it because of course if we're on, we can't go any lower than the one minute time frame. And that's that's the push off to that level, but that's not very many points here to, to play. So it's not really worthwhile at this point. So we might get a pullback here if possible. But we'll kind of see how this plays out now. Uh, Lennox, if there's uh, nothing quite active now, I can show, uh, remember some of the differences between the actual futures and these uh, many contracts that we look at, if you'd like. Okay, go ahead, George. I'll see if I can find anything else in the interim. Okay, show monitor two. Okay, I, uh, let me know when you can see uh, my four screens, Lennox. Yes. yes. Okay, uh, what you're seeing on here is that I have our diamonds on the upper um, left, and the bottom I have the Qs. Uh, on the top right, I have IWM, and the bottom I have the spies. Now the gray area is what happened during the extended hours when the normal market is closed. And you can see that there's actually more activity going on in the spies and the queues than there is. There's only one band in here for the diamonds and there's uh, about four or five bands for the um, <clears throat> IWM. Now, what I'm going to show you is what the futures look like on, on the same um, time frame. Okay, the, again, the top right is the, um, di uh, the diamond futures, which is uh, uh, the Dow Jones Industrials. And on the uh, top right is uh, the Russell 2000. And on the bottom, I have the NASDAQ. And on the right, I have the S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 is your most active one. And it used to be um, uh, the broadest band. Well, there, there it is right now. I brought, brought it in by squishing up the chart. But it, it, that, was the, that and the NASDAQ were about the most active during the entire extended hours move and as you can see now um, they are uh, the most actively traded ones now that's these the um, s and 500 futures are the ones that the big boys trade <clears throat> uh, these contracts are 10 times um, the uh, contract size the spx is 10 times the contract size of the spy <clears throat> so that shows you the difference that's going on now if you remember what these charts look like it what was interesting is that um when the uh <clears throat> futures uh, the market opened we were seeing a, a, a jump up in activity on the um, on Lennox's chart because he didn't have the extended time period on it. When you have the extended time period on, they they simply open uh, pretty much at the same place. Uh, go back to the here's here's the um, contracts that we uh, normally trade. And you see that when the open came about on Lennox's chart, since he didn't have the extended hours on, it went from this lower level all the way up to here on the opening. And then it continued up and, and Lennox took some off it right up here. Now these are tick charts and tick charts mean that a bar is only completed when all the ticks have been added to it. 
these these tick charts are 333 ticks and right now this like house in here says 199 now it says 208 this is the ticks coming in and as these ticks come in when this reaches 303 this last bar will be complete and a new bar will start in and you'll see it here's 311 316 and now it jumped over to 50 so we had a closing of the other bar and this a lot of activity came in you can see the change in activity how this is almost up to another bar in in just about um there it turned over so you see how much activity came in on that one uh tick bar of 333 ticks that was 333 contracts then and a contract could be any size of course so that gives you an idea of the difference between this kind of chart and like a one minute chart a one minute chart will only turn over every minute just as a five minute chart will only turn over every five minutes but on ticks every trade that comes in will increase the number of ticks so depending upon the ticks you're counting i'll show you what i mean if i go into my time frame and here's ticks you'll see i have i can choose from 133 ticks all the way up to 3200 ticks which you would only use in um well i could use one tick too if you want but uh that would only be in extremely active markets that you would want to do something like that now at, at this point i i don't really need the extended time frame so i can just turn that off on these charts and uh now we're looking at the same charts that um uh Lennox is looking at on his without the extended time frame and on these two the extended time frame is already off so it doesn't matter but now these charts would line up exactly like Lennox's charts line up let me get rid of there that's what the spies look like and as you can see the cues have been trending down uh the spies have been they were going up this, this morning but they have reached the peak and are uh dropping down a bit uh if i look at the um percentage change it looks like everything is still positive except for the oh no that, that's all right everything is all, all the uh, futures that we're looking at are positive the only thing that i have is negative is by 0.18 percent is the dollar itself and here's what the dollar looks like at this point this is on a uh, four hour chart but you can see it's been in a, a rather tight channel at this point um, and over on the right i have uh, all the indicators showing and as you can see the um the russell is up 1.36 and um that tends to be the highest um, the nasdaq is up 1.04 and the uh S&P 500 is up 1.1 percent. Okay, Lennox, if you want to take over. Okay. I I have my chat open, so if anybody has any questions, or I I can uh, let Lennox know. All right, let me just uh, show my screen again here. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So I am currently looking at the S and P five hundred. Yes, I'm actually looking at the uh, E mini S and P five hundred futures, and I've got the volume uh, on, and I'm on the one minute time frame. What I'm looking at is just just to see um, what the volume is like, and it's quite strong at this point. As you can see when it started, when the market started off, it, it was very strong. It had lots of green and. and and now it's it's a you know starting to look like it's waning a little bit at this point. But um, what the uh, the e mini futures really do is uh, gives you a um, a glimpse into what the entire market is is basically doing overall. So it's a it's a good gauge. It's it's similar to me putting on the the U S dollar. So if I put U S dollar. Uh, U.S. dollar currency, it's a, it's similar. Uh, the move of the U.S. dollar is similar to, um, or gives you a gauge of what the um, the major currencies are doing, and this is uh, what the uh, E mini futures does in the stock market. It kind of controls, or is the leader for what the underlying market is doing. It's quite interesting. So looking at, I'm just going to go through the, I don't see anything that uh, at this point is set up to trade because we had that big up move. Everything is just kind of settling and going sideways a little bit right now. Uh, looking at the US dollar from for today, this is on the daily. It's still struggling, the US dollar now. We had, it had quite a down move here, and but now it's, you can see we're in a kind of a sideways battle here, up and down. Yeah. This channel. So it's not making a, a a big move in either direction at this point. Yeah, on the hourly. Yeah, we're totally totally sideways. So it's looking um, more like it it wants to go to the downside here. So that would um, mean a weakness in the Euro, or so, sorry, strength in the Euro. If, that's it. if this the US dollar is leaning to go to the downside, downside, we would look for a push to the upside for the Euro. So you can see we are also inside of a channel, uh, but we do have a one, two, three formed right there. So we could see that push out and up um as the us dollar as goes the opposite way so that's uh, uh lennox um i have um an ea on the uh usd jpy and it's been going north uh, in pretty much the same uh way that gbp jpy has been going north So it looks like uh, with the yen has some strength to it over the dollar, as does the GBP have more strength in the yen. Okay. So right now, the, both the NASDAQ uh, QQQs and the SPIs minis are down we have um the uh, iwms have uh, relaxed a bit they're at 205.11 right now okay so the euro is is moving to the upside so is the gbp at this point so the gbp uh, of course, also does um, move with the U.S. dollar. So you can see the GBP setting up for a breakout to the upside more than likely than anything else here. Yeah. And um, 
let's see what uh, the Aussie. So Aussie should be the same. If I can do this right, Aussie should also be looking to break to the upside. And it's already it's already done it. It's yep. it's totally so the Aussie. What it's telling us is that the Aussie has a quite a great deal of strength. So great from down strength, here, yeah. down here we broke out, and then again we another one, two, three at this point, and that's the breakout for that. And we're actually in the fifth wave at this moment in time at this point. So it's moved quite dramatically compared to the others. So New Zealand then would more than likely be the same or looks similar to um, the Aussie. And uh, indeed, you can see it's almost um, a, an identical type of move. So the last one, two, three was, was right there for this move and it's given us that structure as well. Okay, let's see, so. Now what's interesting, if you compare the uh, Aussie with the, key, the Kiwi, <clears throat> uh, the Kiwi tends to be uh, more of a farming uh, milk industry, et cetera. So the, the DBA, which is your commodities, uh, your food commodities, uh, it would tend to follow. It would be tend to be the leader for the uh, NAS for the Kiwis, whereas um, uh, metals, uh, a lot of mining you have in Australia, so the uh, metals would be uh, a factor that weighs on the uh, Aussie it's going up. Do you have a DBA chart, uh, Lennox, in there? Uh, a DBA, what is? DBA is um, the uh, a major commodity uh, chart. I'm not sure, let's see. Um, okay, yeah, let me just finish my. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. My look at the, ma the majors here, George. Okay. Um, no USD, USD CAD. So, um, US dollar pointing to the downside, uh, for pointing to a downside move, would also uh, more than likely be pointing to a downside move for the USD CAD. And it too is setting up, it looks like, at least for a move, a continuation move to the downside at this point. So just looking through the, the majors here. So USD CAD, let's take a look at USD Swiss. That should also be pointing to the downside, and it is. So it's you know it's tricky because you you come in through these choppy areas, but uh, you catch a one, two, three, and that those are the kind of opportunities. But it's very choppy in here. Um, it's tough because you get fooled by various setups and so on. So. You can see the volume the is waiting on that. Yeah. And USDJPY, finally. So USDJPY can be different from USD CAD and USD Swiss and might not be following the US dollar, and it, and it isn't in this case. So it, it's actually moving to the upside. So we had a one, two, three here, and that's propelled us to the upside. Another one, two, three right there. So it's looking like we want to continue pushing to the upside for USDJPY. So that's a look at the, you know, all the majors and what they, how they, how they correspond with the US dollar index. Quite interesting. Um, let's take a look at uh, gold. Oops. So gold, trying to, gold is trying to push out of there, eh? but still mired in this mess that it's been in for a while. It's just been very choppy. Not much movement there. A little bit of a movement, I guess, but uh, nothing dramatic on gold here.
probably get a, a retrace of this move. It looks very weak overall. I'm just kind of seeing this as a as a kind of a fake out move to the upside. It doesn't have much strength to it. And we might come right back down. We'll see. Let's take a look at crude oil. That's the futures. Uh, sure, look at the futures on crude oil, Let's see what it looks like. And crude oil has been in quite a run. The one, two, three bottom here, and it's just been straight up in the air. It's still looking quite strong. I guess you you guys are still getting battered by those um, the cold the cold out there, is George. Yeah, uh, actually, it's getting warmer. Okay. So the um, the, the heating companies are not liking that too much then. <laughs> yeah, I've actually scheduled uh, a, a group uh, taking a group uh, to look for seals off at the in the ocean this uh, weekend. It's supposed to be up to fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Is, does anyone have any questions or comments or anything that uh, anything that they're looking at in particular? Um, you can see crude oil here is looking to. Um, push to the upside right now. So we would get a one, two, three here that would give us that move. So you just have to be patient, wait that out. But still looking pretty strong overall. And let's go back to um, Yeah, there's not so, not so, much. Yeah, so the markets yeah, the market's open with some with some vigor here, but then it's just kind of yeah. petered out completely. So that's what can happen. You know, it just goes for a while nicely, and then that's why I, did, I was hesitant about trying to jump into anything because it had been up so much overnight that move might have just extended itself. Right? So, and when you look at um, if I make this big again. Um, when you look at where I went for my target, you know, 1.618 or two point or two percent move from here, um, you're at the at the target area. So when you're at that target area, and you, the reason why these areas you start going sideways and so forth is because, you know, I'm not the only one that's seeing these areas, right? You know, other people put the the fibs on and see the same areas, so they would be looking. To take profits as well at these critical uh, Fibonacci um, mathematical numbers, right? And that's that's why you get that kind of uh, reaction. So, so even if we looked at um, other stocks, like say um, I don't know Apple, if I can get Apple. they would all have done a similar thing. They would all pop at the beginning and then have a little struggle uh, trying to go any further at this point. And so that's it's boating with the same way for every all the other. Most of the stocks would be doing a similar type of thing. So no questions from anyone? OK. Um... I was looking at um, LPI, which I believe is an oil play. It came down, but it's moving up quite nicely at this point. And I suspect this would be a short-term play on the oil. You showed the oil chart before it was moving higher. Um, I don't see any earnings coming out on it, but it seemed to be one that was getting ready to push higher. The other one I saw that might be interesting was Zim, Z-I-M. They're in um, the um, delivery business, freight business, et cetera, and that's been moving quite higher. It, 
this point. Yeah, it's very um it's very tepid now, eh? Oh, very tepid, yes. Mm. Yeah, it's not giving me any warm and fuzzies here. Yeah, I, I I'm not really seeing anything that I'm ready to jump in on at this point. The only thing that I can see is that the NASDAQ is finally started to uh, climb a bit, but it's now looked like it's reached its first peak and both the NASDAQ and the spies are, are retracing a bit, which is normally to be expected. The IWM has been flat almost since the time that Lennox got out of this course of trade. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things you get the uh, opportunity, you get into your target zone, you just take the profit, you know, you can always get back in if, ne if necessary. So, yeah, you know, all I can do is as soon as if I'm in a position, as soon as the market opens, I'm trying to take the get out because, you know, this is the kind of thing that can happen. You just start going sideways and you know you get stuck in this mire for quite a while. So always good to always good to take profits in any case. Yeah, the least amount of activity I'm finding is on the um the diamonds. I'll be looking for opportunity if I felt that we'd still have more push to the upside. It's okay, well, spies or the um, queues might be uh, something that is opening up there. The um, queues have a, a nice one, two, three on the tick chart, and so do the spies of a second one two three coming in right now okay so at this point here we do have a, a one two three and we're pushing out Yes. And you have same kind of thing going on on the tick chart, uh, on the cues, I'm sorry. Is is your um are you delayed there at Lennox? Am I delayed? On the investing.com? No, I don't think so. Because I, I saw on my tick chart a move that went above the that last high and yours didn't respond until seconds later. Hmm. I don't think so. Looks like I'm um, 205.85, 205, yeah, the same, same as real time. Okay, so we are, we are getting some moves. You're on IWM, oh, okay, that, that explains. I, I was, the, the chart, the, the chart is uh, quite close to what I'm looking at on the spies. So I'm back, I'm back on the futures. Yeah. And, Let's 
I don't know if it'll give me the one hour, the one minute on the futures here. It might not. No, it only gives me five minutes. Okay, so the futures, I can't get the, the one minute on there, but I can get it on here. So let me put my multiple charts back on IWM. I'm gonna look at, um, I'm just gonna say I was gonna uh, take a look at the, the tool sixes, but it's already made this move. Um, okay, broken the top. So there's, you know, yeah, there was yeah. um, that opportunity right in there. I'm just, I was just look, started looking at something else and it came back and it's moved that quickly. Wow, this goes so fast. Um, so that would, you know, you're in that a fourth wave area, you're looking for that final push to the upside and that's what it's doing at this point. So the futures um, kind of propel this move. So if I go back to the futures and look at that, there we are, right there. One minute chart, you can see there, just a few, oh, this is light cute, crude, sorry. Yes. Yeah, it, you can see um, all of a sudden volume picked up uh, and it's propelling the futures, pushing the futures to the upside. And so what that does is it's pushing um, all these uh, indices. So they, they will all start to push to the upside as well. Yeah. They're, they're battling right now, actually, eh? still. Yeah, the market's very choppy. Yeah, very. It's 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 in quite a battle. That's for sure. So, the IWM seems to be the liveliest one at this point here. Very sideways, eh? Yeah, it it just made a new top and now starting to back off that. Its range seems to be a little more than uh, six tenths. Yeah, what George was showing uh, with the ticks, you know, you're inside a, a, a bar and looking at all the movements inside of a bar and the order flow and all that is just uh, simply a, when, if you could see what's going on. Same thing, you know, we've, even when we go to the Forex and, um, and look at the charts, um, the, it's incredible the, uh, what goes on inside these, um, these bars. If you could see the movement. We do have um, in here the, data window. That's that's not the same type of thing. I think on, on uh, M, MQ5, MT5, they give you the um, the play-by-play -play of what's going on with the orders. They don't have it in here in the MT4. I noticed that it was an MT5, you get the order flow. So this is different. So this is an MT5, we're looking at the uh, the same, uh, this is the futures, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P, and the IWM. You can see they're, they're really battling right now on the five minute time frame. So. That's not, nothing, you can see IWM is really struggling. I tried to push out, but could not. So it's mired in a sideways move. So if, if you wanted a second opportunity to get in, 
on that. That would be right about now, I guess. See, so, yeah, so it came right back in. So if this was going to push to the upside, now we would look at buying the tool with 205 and a half, 206 calls at this point for Friday. Let's see what they're looking at. So for the 11th now. And they're pretty pricey. They're, they're over 220 some odd dollars for one contract for the tool. No, sorry, 206, 206 or 175. Which is, yeah, which is not bad. So was this entire move here a new one, two, three, and it's gonna go, we have to wait for, you know, confirmation. If you, you know, to be patient, wait for a confirmation of that break. And if that's so, then that would, that would be a, a nice move that's, that's still to come. But we could still see, you know, further weakness in here because we're kind of sideways. So it's, that's what makes it tough. And we're an hour, we're hour, 45 minutes into the market. And if we're mired in this sideways uh, movement, then it's. Yeah, since, it's since the, done. almost the, since the open, uh, the yeah. IWM has moved only about a dollar up and down. Mm -hmm. So it looked like it was gonna, you know, be a, a very strong day, but it's, Slow down. Yeah, features are slow as well. It's still pointing to a move up. However, it's just very slow. Right? Yes. They all seem to be pointing up, but as Lennox saying, slowly. That's the hourly. See how the four hour looks. Yeah, so the, the you know you can see the overall pattern, the, the overall structure is definitely intact. So we have we do have a one, two, we're in a third way, but it's just finding having a little problem cutting through this area here. And you know, we we could possibly move sideways for a while in here before we get that breakout, or we could just start going, you know, so it's at a, a very uh, stubborn resistance level. You look on a four hour time frame. So that's what's causing this. The, the NASDAQ looks pretty weak too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not much going on there at all. All right, so we're we're an hour in already from well, 45, 40, almost 50 minutes in, and nothing much is going on. So unless you guys have any other questions and so forth, we can uh, come back at uh, noon to see if anything changes. Not much is going on here, so there's not really anything I can jump into. Um, we, this afternoon, I'll look at the um, earnings to see what's coming out for tonight. Let me see, so we're on February 9th today already. Okay, so oh, Walt Disney is coming out tonight. So I'm just taking a quick look at Walt Disney to see what it looks like. That should be a big one. Oh, um, yeah, okay. So Walt Disney Monthly, 
Let's see what it looks like here. I can get Walt Disney on the 4X, which is nice. Mm -hmm. so there is a one, two, three. And we are well, I think it came back, right? quite a move down, but it looks uh, like it's, it's wanting to move back up. So here's the weekly. And hmm. we came right back. Down, got a nice tail there and I'm pushing back to the upside right now. This is a weekly time frame. So three weeks in a row we've been up on the lows. And daily. It's trying. Hmm. So we have a one, two, three top here. Broke through down to this level. So again, you know, I'm not liking this, you know, even at this point, we could still get a pullback. So, because we have a one, two, three at this point here. So looking like that would be more of a, a put play, but four hour. As, you know, what's the um, consensus on Disney uh, when it comes to um, the fundamentals? Is a would be a consideration here. You know, have they? Um, they don't have their um, parks open and so forth, but they do have the online content. Uh, that's about it. So is that enough to propel them to the upside would be the question. Um, what I'm seeing here, it just looks a bit lean and I would think that we'd be looking for a put play on Disney at that point. But I have been wrong before. So and it, it, with the earnings, it's, it's, it's hit and miss sometimes for sure. Let's see, was there any others in the earnings? After market. Not very many, um, no, no many, not many big boys uh, after market today. Twillow. Man, man you life's pretty big. Manulice down um, somewhere there. There's Sun Stop. Life as well. Yeah. Equifax. Um, don't see Manulife on the list. I thought I saw it. Oh. It was there. It was it there first time. It might have been oh. this morning. Let me just see if they were they were this morning. Nope. Oh, I saw manual life there somewhere. Oh well. The sun life. The sun life's pretty big too. And Twillow. Twillow might be one. Let me just take a look at Twillow. MGM Resorts Limited. I would think they would go down. Yeah, these resorts not, not probably not doing too well. Let's see what Twilo looks like. Wow, they've had quite a drop. Yeah. Yeah, so they're battling for their lives right now. I don't know if that's a uh, Push off doesn't look like a push off the bottom here yet. It's still very uh, weak overall, so it's a tough one that one. Mm, interesting. Take a closer look at that one later. And um, LVS. 
Was it Las Vegas? Oh, MGM. MGM is this. MGM. Let's see what MGM looks like. They've had quite a move. They've been moving quite well to the upside. So um, I think these guys are going to, you know, they've they've kind of uh, opened up a little bit, in, you know, in Vegas and all that. So they're probably having a good show of it now. You can see that that's what's happening. They're getting quite the push. Nice moves here. So that's already factored in. Yeah, I wouldn't be touching this one. It's just it's gone so far already. Uh, you know, you don't know where it's going to be. Does it have enough now after earnings to move? Yeah, it's popped so much. You're not you're not yeah. sure you get anything out of it. Nope. All right. How's our time? Seven twenty-five. All right. So um, I'll come back. We'll we will come back at um, noon o'clock, which is three three p.m. Eastern to see how the, what the last hour looks like. So if anyone cares to join us at that time, we'll be here. And um, Lennox, uh, last yes. glimpse on the GBP USD. Well, good morning. <laughs> um, morning. Uh, do, you, do, do you consider it a double topish thing or is that already a one, two, three on a one hour? GBP USD. Oops. It's been a nice channel. One, uh, one, one hour time frame. Sorry. Okay. Very. It's. This it, is very uh, suspect. Eh? We're just kind of chopping, chopping, chopping. It's. It's. This is where you don't really want to play. It's very difficult to. Um, yeah. play here you know the expected move i believe was to the upside but um it's so such a messy chart i'm not liking the look of it at all peter would diagnose a double topish thing on the higher time frames wouldn't he <laughs> this is yeah i don't like the look of this chart it's very very choppy at this point so it looks more like we're you know we're, we're gonna fall than, than anything else on GDP USD although you know we, we said the US dollar US dollar has still been going down slightly yeah we would expect this to it looks like the US dollar wants to fall so we would expect the GBP USD to go up instead so um, looks one hour. One hour. Yeah, you can see we're just totally flat here and looking to fall on the US dollar. So that would give us uh, GBP more. I meant to do that more emphasis on a move to the upside for GBP, but it's it's very um, choppy as well. So yeah, you have care has to be taken in there. That's all I would say if you wanted to play that. Tempting doji forming, but that's you about get, it. You know, you get faked out by these moves. You think that it's a one, two, three, and so on. And you know, this one yeah. looks like it could be the move. You know, but we, you know, best to be certain and wait for the, the breakout. I would say, like that. Hope that I don't know if that helps, but it's, Thank you. it's too heavy, <laughs> you know, at this point. All right. Thank everyone for attending with us. Thanks, George. Yeah, we'll, good, good pipping. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for um, hanging with us. We appreciate it. And we will, we, like I say, we'll be back at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. All right. So have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. And we'll see you then. Well, Thank thanks. you, George. Thank, Thank you, you a lot. George. All right. Take care, guys.